All right, it has been some time since I've made a video. I'm quite busy in the uh, holiday times. Also had COVID and other fun things. But uh, I got a little more time now to start playing around again. Um, but I have to say, not a lot of progress on this particular system. Uh, I've been trying out a lot of different combinations, especially on the ground shunts, on the tuning, um, and so on, to work out some different combinations. But at the end of the day, um, I haven't been able to get that, let's say, shining light um, where I would say I can definitely see um, there's a difference in the output versus the input. I would say everything right now looks one to one. So let me kind of show you what I'm seeing. And I'd love to hear if there's any comments from the community to, uh, you know, what I might be able to change. And we'll walk through a few things. We'll show the circuit diagrams. There's actually two combinations um, of circuits I've been focusing on and trying. Uh, I'll put an image of those up uh, so you can see. And uh, let's just play around with this one right here, circuit two, in just a moment. Now, unfortunately, I haven't received my RIC2 kit yet. Um, I do hope Mr. Rich Friedrich is okay. Um, haven't really heard from uh, the company either. Um, I'm very happy to be patient, um, but I do he's I, I do hope that he's actually okay. Um, so let me put up the uh, circuits here, and again, this is going to be circuit two uh, that we're going to play around with, and um, you guys can take a look at that for a few seconds, and then um, we'll we'll show you a few things that I'm seeing. Okay, so I hope you had a look at the circuits. Um, I'm trying to make my life a little bit easier and run this kind of uh, run the L1 directly from the signal generator with a square wave. It makes the scope outputs a little bit cleaner um, so I can kind of see where the interesting things are in the circuits. Um, so let's kind of take a look. So right now I have L1 uh, running at about uh, 2.1 megahertz. Um, I've gone to the um, adjustable input uh, with the L1 in the center. Um, and I generally try to line up the inner side of each coil uh, to line up with the um, outer ends of the L1 coil. These coils are oppositely wound. You can maybe kind of tell um, from there. Um, but let's look at some, some of the interesting stuff. So right now, um, I have the full bridge rectifier, kind of messy. I have the negative side of that full bridge connected to the 470 ohm uh, input, uh, which is then grounded. The positive side obviously goes to the cap. Out here, just a little timing circuit um, from the second channel of the frequency generator with some, some MOSFETs, uh, the transformer, and then ultimately to the light bulb. Um, but I'm seeing kind of different things at different frequencies. Uh, the other thing I have on this particular one uh, is the uh, very small trim cap on the center tap of the uh, L2s. Um, but honestly, I'm seeing pretty much the same things from uh, circuit one to circuit two. So I'll just kind of show circuit two uh, for time's sake here. So if I just the L1 at this particular frequency, this is kind of one of those resonant frequencies uh, that I see, 2.1 megahertz, and I put L1 in the center as much as I can get it, I see almost nothing on the uh, output. And right now I'm tapping off um, both legs of the bridge rectifier. But if I slide it to the right, you can see we actually begin to get an output. And I get a peak to peak voltage, 124, 126. I slid it all the way to the right. And I actually get output on my light bulb. If I go back to the center, I lose it all. And I'm back in that really low level of, of input. 
Now if I slide it all the way to the left, you can see if we start coming back up um, at a higher voltage and the light bulb turns back on. The other interesting thing to know about this frequency is the um, different legs of L2 are out of phase. And uh, they stay out of phase if I slide it to the right or to the left. Um, they, will, they will basically remain out of phase um, the entire time. Now switching the ground, let's say we go from 470 to let's big jump like 10. Maybe slight difference on the output, uh, but no real difference on the, on the scope shot. Um, if I change the output ground shunt here, um, I can either completely remove it, and actually everything still operates, so uh, the transformer and the capacitor are just kind of connected. Um, everything still operates just perfectly fine, but if I add the um, diode, maybe I get slightly improved brightness. It might be kind of hard to tell. Um, from, from the video. Okay, so now uh, I mentioned there's this kind of second frequency where interesting things happen. It's up around three and a half megahertz here. But now you'll notice both legs of L2 are in phase. And right now I'm in the center to achieve the highest output, but if, and then if I slide it to the right, it lowers just slightly. Um, or if I slide it to the left, same same thing, but not as dramatic as what I see at that, at that lower frequency. But definitely in the center here, um, in phase is the highest. Now, not as high as um, what I had at the lower frequency, 2.1-ish megahertz, um, but still similar, similar reactions to the ground shunts. Again, I don't have this guy connected. Again, maybe slightly brighter output um, when I connect the diode. Um, if I connect the resistors on the output, everything kind of completely goes away. Um, but if I usually the diode or completely disconnected um, works best in this arrangement. So between circuit one and circuit two, um, I see very, very similar things. Um, so I haven't got there yet. Um, I'm probably gonna take a break on this uh, particular system just kind of waiting to get the information from my RIC 2 kit so I don't go completely nuts and keep banging my head against a wall. Um, I did have my 3D printer kind of crazy busy over the holidays so I started playing around with with this guy and I'll do a separate video on this guy because I think there's some interesting things um, and it's kind of fun to play around with um, but this is basically a uh, just a coil and I have this arrangement around the outside where I can put these capacitor plates. Um, I think I have 24 potential slots here. And I've been looking at different combinations of capacitor plates. And this is basically a similar arrangement to, you know, this guy, the plasma column. But before I step up to something like this, um, I figure I could build kind of a, uh, a coil version of it. It doesn't obviously get as high voltage as the plasma column. Um, but it's a little bit easier to work with to try different combinations of plates, um, see how the plates affect each other, see how they affect the tuning, and so on. But this is actually a fun guy to play around with. So I'll do a separate video on that. We'll call that, I don't know, heavy side flow or, or something. Um, and we'll go from there. So there she is. Um, again, if you guys have any comments on, on what I might be doing, I'll post the... Uh, circuit diagrams here at the end again so you can just take a second second look I've tried to provide as much detail on them as possible um, hopefully mr. rich Friedrich is okay and uh, hopefully I'll be getting the Rick kit too soon but uh, would love to hear your comments would love to hear your feedback if there's some things I could tweak on this particular circuit um, to maybe get over that hump so thanks for your time still learning we'll talk to you all later